You are tuned into the Richard Brown Show here on WCOM LP Chapel Hill and Carborough 103.5 FM. I am Richard Brown, and you are listening to the Richard Brown Show. So today, what we're going to do is just have a general conversation. I know we've uh, done a couple of shows now and been very much more stern, much more serious. But today, what we want to do is talk about art talk about the creation of art and talk about how at least one particular visual artist goes about his business. I think that that for me that process and how individuals go about their business can lead to steps, can give us ideas and can help us to grow. Here on the Richard Brown Show one of the key things that I continue to try to work on is this idea of taking dreams and turn them, turning them into reality. And so today what we're going to do is have uh, uh, an artist, particularly a visual artist, talk about that envisioning process for him. And I hope the show today helps you to think about, okay, I know I have these dreams, um, I may be missing a couple of steps, and how can I get from point A to point B? My hope is, is that today's show can jog your memory, can help you to inspire you to kind of close some of those gaps. Because this space is a space of expanding affirmation for African Americans and for everyone. And um, everyone. And so this is a space where you can try, fail, and try again. And that is wonderful. That is good. So let me introduce my guest today, and I uh, hope you enjoy the show. Uh, Mr. Reed, thank you for coming on the show today. Thank you. All right. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and kind of uh, how you got into you know the visual artist, uh, being a visual artist. And I, and, and, I, and I should also ask, is is that the right term, that, the term that you would use, or would you use another? Well, like Richard here said, my name is Antoine Reed. I have been pretty much into the arts ever since I was born. I always kind of drew little pictures and everything else. And so I went to um, Durham School of the Arts. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that. Of course. Um, went there from middle school through high school. So I've always kind of been in the arts. And once I got into college, I kind of looked for a major that kind of allowed me to be creative, but of course would allow me to support myself at the same time. So I got into journalism and with the journalism degree in the background, I took that and combined it and um, kind of studied the graphic arts within um, a journalism background. And so that's pretty much how I got into the arts and kind of took my desire to be creative and moved it into like the kind of professional field. Okay. One of the things that I always find interesting is, is how people are attracted to um, a particular arena and you said that you were attracted to arts from like the moment you were born I mean, what is it about the art uh, you know I mean you're clearly into the visual component but was it music or was there were a particular painting or a particular picture you know maybe you know maybe even something as early on as you know uh, you know I mean something that you saw as a kid that kind of triggered your fascination I mean was there walk me through early childhood uh, or were there particular things that you were really, really fascinated about? I think like a lot of young people, like the first kind of exposure to the arts I got were actually, you know, television and cartoons and stuff. I mean, you kind of see that creative and you see all these different cartoons and when I was growing up, not to date myself or make me seem a little older, but we had um, the Smurfs and the Snorkels and like these really weird creations. It's not like most cartoons today were kind of plain and simple and mm -hmm. So it was like a lot of these weird, really creations that you see in these fantasy worlds being created. And so, like a lot of young people, when I first started out in the arts, the first thing I started doing was, you know, trying to recreate these characters mm -hmm. on a paper and, you know, showing it to my mom and showing it to other people. And then as I kind of got older, I would continue to do that and sort of create my own little world and create my own little characters and their own little stories and everything like that. So. Talk a little bit about how the reactions, talk about the reactions. What reactions did you get from 
family, friends, just people in general, as you were saying, hey, check this out. I mean, did you get, I mean, was there people who were quite negative about what you were doing or for the most part were people saying, you know, that's actually very, very good and, and you know, See, please I never, continue. I never encountered anyone who was completely negative about it. They always kind of said that what I was doing was like really good and it kind of always encouraged me even from, I remember in fifth grade, I would create my own little comic book series and kind of show it to the teacher. Mm -hmm. And even though the it was like based on Star Trek or something like really nerdy and stuff, and I created my own cast of characters and everything and would show it off and would sit there, you know, do my schoolwork, but then work on this comic book series like nonstop and, you know, with my crayons and pencils and coloring it in and mm -hmm. creating it. So never did I encounter anyone who was like, oh, you shouldn't be doing that. I mean, even. As I got, I remember in tenth grade we had a, to do this world history project where it was like create your own poster about a Greek god or your own little mythical story. And I remember I did the poster and I was like, oh, I don't like it. I thought it was like the most horrible thing I've done. But the teacher just thought it was like the greatest thing, and she hung hung it up on the wall. And everybody in the class was kind of like jealous because she talked about it nonstop. And so. For me, I guess I'm like my own toughest critic. So yeah, that, that was my next yeah. question. Are you are you highly critical of your own work? I am. Like, there's hardly anything that I do where I'm like, that's perfect. I don't need to touch it. Like, I'll sit there and mess with it. There's things I've done years ago that I still think about and say, I wish I could have done that better. Or I wish I could have put this twist on it. Or I see somebody else who's done the same project or the same type of art, and I was like, wow, I wish I had thought of it that way. So. I'm probably my own toughest critic and I'm never at the point of saying it's perfect or that's great. I'm always, it's always a work in progress type of thing. But I mean, that's art. I mean, you know, yeah. the stuff that we're doing, I mean, it's almost like even the radio show. I mean, I know um, there are definitely things that, you know, moments when I hear my voice, you know, when I go back to, you know, to work at the work in my home studio and I'm like oh man I really wish I had <laughs> not said that and I really wish I had said it that way um, and it's just you know I'm like oh but you know but you also have to understand that that's a unique moment in time and that's what it is you know yeah. you captured what you could capture at that time so I think one of the things there are some people who are able I don't know if the words overcome their internal criticism to actually, you know, to actually get work finished, what we can call semi-finished product out. Um, talk a little bit about how you decide, how do you get to that point where you say, okay, this is semi-finished, I can actually show it to someone else and feel fairly confident that I'll get positive feedback. Well, um, like when I work on a project, the first thing I have to do is kind of research it. And I guess a lot of people don't think of art as being like something scientific or that you have to research. And so I do a lot of research looking into like what other artists and what other people have approached it. Mm -hmm. So I can get a kind of put my idea, like spin on something that's, you know, because a lot of what art is is kind of like recreating what's already been done mm -hmm. and how I feel. And so. I like to kind of see what other people have done so I can put my own spin on it, but at the same time so I don't do something that's completely, you know, off kilter. Because a lot of what I do with graphic design is I'm not doing it for me, I'm doing it for somebody else or company or a business. And so I can't do something that's going to completely alienate what people expect out of that company. But I need to do something that's going to be creative enough that's, you know, going to make them stand out. Mm -hmm. And so. I do a lot of research and get to the point where I'm like, you know, I'll spend like an hour or two kind of sketching out ideas and now I'll actually put it down on paper or on a computer and then I'll kind of spin it out and say, you know, this is what I've done so far, what do you think? Because like I said, to me, I'm my own toughest critic, so if I sat there and waited till I felt good about it, it would never, it would never, get, out. It would never get out. And so I kind of limit myself to like an hour or two working on it by myself and then I like to show it to people, whether it's on my blog or website or Twitter or Facebook or something, I'll just take it out there and, you know, tell people, give me your honest opinion and mm -hmm. usually you'll get an honest opinion 